there, and welcome to this special edition of Art Attack. Now, I bet that somewhere you've got your own personal favourite Art Attack that you've done. It could be something you've done at school or something in your own drawing book at home, or maybe it's even hanging on your bedroom wall by now. But I'll bet that you've got a picture or something else that you've done that you're secretly quite pleased with. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me which is my favourite Art Attack, and the truth is, we've done so many together over the years, it's very hard to choose. So what I've done is I've put together a gallery of my own personal favourite art attacks that we've done together over the last five or six years. And you'll probably have a good laugh at how my hairstyle changes too. <laughs> so, OK, let's kick off with the very first art attack that I ever did. Let me let you into a secret. I have got a big problem. I keep getting the urge to do this. Woo! Mm. Now, I call it plop art. Not only does it look good, it is brilliant to do. All you need is an egg. Now, what I've done here is I've chipped a hole about two centimetres across in the top of the egg using the handle of a spoon. You empty the contents out of your egg into a cup, use it for an omelette or something a little later on, and then into the empty eggshell, you pour paint. Now, you can experiment with the type of paint you use, or you can use ink. This is poster paint I'm using here, mixed with a little bit of water. In it goes. Nicely mixed up. Now, as you can see, plop art can be a little bit messy, so please do it out in the garden, lay loads of newspaper down, put your plopping paper down, and then plops away! How's about two colours in one eggshell? Plops away! And when you've tried it once, you can't stop doing it. Plops away! And you know what I've always wanted to do? The ultimate plop. You know, whenever we make something together on Art Attack, it really pleases me when the project not only looks good, but when you can also do something with it. And, you know, I think one of the cleverest things we've ever done together was a couple of years ago, at a time when the whole country was going dinosaur crazy. Do you remember that? Well, do you remember this? Do you want to see one of my all-time favourite Art Attacks? Forget piggy banks, this is the Art Attack Dinosaur Bank. Come and have a look at this. Blow up a balloon to roughly the same size as an Easter egg, but definitely smaller than your head. Then take two Luro tubes, cut them in half, and tape them together so you have something that looks like that. And then tape them to one side of the balloon. So a bit of tape on there, and onto the side of the balloon. And there you have the legs and the body of the dinosaur. And then Take a felt tip pen and very carefully draw a rectangle on the top of a balloon. Now, it needs to be about one centimetre by four centimetres. It doesn't have to be neat, and that'll be the slot where your money goes later on. Then, take some scrap paper that's roughly the same length as the balloon 
and crunch it up and bend it slightly. And you need to do two of those because I'm going to tape one of them to one end of the balloon. Like that. When it stands still for the neck, you just need to bend it up. There it is. And then the other to the other end of the balloon and bend that down for the tail. And the good thing about paper is that if your neck flops, just bend it up again because it's good stuff to model with. And there it is. And that's roughly the shape of your dinosaur. Now the good bit, the messy bit. Take some lengths of loo roll and start to wrap it around the dinosaur shape. You just wrap it all the way round, apart from the slot at the top. You'll see why in a minute. And then just slop on some PVA glue, mix two parts glue with one part water. And you've seen me do this before. Just slop the glue on. And what it does, it sort of disintegrates the tissue paper or the loo paper and binds it to the shape underneath, which is the shape of the dinosaur. And just keep slopping on the PVA and slopping on the loo paper. And you probably need three or four layers of loo paper. That's roughly equivalent to one whole loo roll's worth of paper. Slop on your PVA glue all over your dinosaur, apart from the slot. And when it's finished, it will look something like that. Look at that. And then take two small balls scrap paper and just dip them into the glue, put them on the top of the head for eyes. There's one there and one there and then start to slop on some paint. Now I'm using acrylic paint here but you can use poster paint, in fact any type of paint you like but I find acrylic paint is best for this. And I'm doing it in a sort of green and yellow blotch colour and who's to say dinosaurs weren't that colour, eh? You can experiment. Nobody really knows, do they? I'm just going over the whole of the dinosaur. And you see there, there's even the slot at the top where I didn't put any paper before. So go over the whole of the dinosaur, apart from the eyes, and when it's finished, you'll have something that looks like that. And I didn't paint the eyes. In fact, I have painted them white with a little black dot in the middle. And I've covered the whole thing with another layer of PVA glue which gives us this very sort of hard finish and a nice shiny finish. And there it is, and you're ready to pop your money in. And where does the money go? Well, it goes in the slot, but you have to pop the balloon first through the slot. There we go. There it is. And then you pop your money into the slot. And if you need to get your money out, just tip your dinosaur upside down, make a hole through one of his legs, get the money out, and then repair it using exactly the same process, glue, tissue paper, and paint. And there it is, the Art Attack Dinosaur Bank. Try it yourself. And of course, you can experiment using different cut-out cardboard shapes and tape them to the balloon. And in fact, you could even invent your own dinosaur, an Art Attackosaurus. Go on then, have a go. A dinosaur bank. Now, I know I keep saying this, but you really don't have to be a great artist to be a great artist. Art Attack has always been about having fun with art and creating fabulous things out of, well, almost nothing. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't need any expensive art materials from specialist shops. There's nothing wrong with that sort of stuff, but you just don't need it. I mean, let's face it, we've created some really effective pieces of art together using the most unusual things. Just take a look at this beautiful calligraphy. This was done with black ink. This one was done with red poster paint watered down. And look at that fabulous split letter effect. And you're not going to believe how I did those letters. Take a ruler and draw a line across a piece of paper, across the top of the ruler, and then another line across the bottom of the ruler. And then just move the ruler about one and a half to two centimetres up and draw another line. 
and these are guidelines to practice small and taller letters. Now, I'm not going to use expensive calligraphy pens or brushes. I am going to use my favourite ice lolly. That's all you need, your favourite ice lolly. And the first thing to do is eat it. Save the stick and then carefully snap the stick in half. And there you have two calligraphy pens for lolly lettering. And take some ink, just ordinary fountain pen ink, or ready-mixed poster paint that you mix with a lot of water so it's nice and runny. And let me just give you a tip. Hold the stick exactly like you were holding a fountain pen. Forget that it's a stick, hold it like a pen. Dip it into your ink, and then start to practice your lolly lettering. Another tip here, just keep all of the snapped end of your stick on the paper you get this fantastic thick and thin effect on your lettering. Look at that fancy flick there as well. And with a bit of practice, you will discover all the different effects and stars that you can achieve with a lolly stick. Let's do one more there. Let me show you that. And again, all the time, I'm just keeping the whole of this snapped end onto the paper to create thick, thin, thick again, and then I'll flick for thin. Look at that. Now, sometimes when you snap a lolly stick, you get this splintered sort of jagged edge. Well, don't throw that away, because that can be used to good effect. Now, I'll just dip this into the ink, shake the excess off, and watch this. You get a smashing sort of split letter effect. There it is. Just do a bit more at the top, and again, I'll give it another flick. Another way to create split letter is to take your lolly stick and just snip a notch right in the middle of your stick. But be careful if you're using the old scissors like this. You've just got a little notch in the end there. Again, dip it into the ink, shake off the excess, and you'll notice I have to keep dipping into the ink. That's all right. That's how the old calligraphy artists did it. And do your letter. And there it goes. It just splits in the middle. And if you snap a couple of sticks, you can make a whole set of calligraphy pens. Try it yourself. It's great fun to do and a very cheeky art attack. Lolly lettering. Do you know, an awful lot of people say to me, Oi, Neil, how do you do those big art attacks? Well, I decide what picture I want to make first of all. Then I do a little sketch of it on a piece of paper. Then the whole of the art attack team goes out for a couple of days to try and find all the bits and pieces and all the props that I need to make the picture. And when it's all ready to go, I go out and I make the big picture. Now, the question I get asked more than anything is, do I really make those big art attacks myself? And the answer is, well, yeah, of course I do. But sometimes I do get a little help from, um, well, whoever is around at the time. More injury time. Up you get. Oh, that's it. Touch your toes. A bit of exercise will sort you out. Only a bit of cramp and that. Uh, uh. oh, you come here, Uzma. That's it. Get down there. That's it. And you touch your toes. Bit of exercise. There's no one anymore. Right. You two, shoes off. Down. Ex and you, come on. In you come. That's it. Exercise it up, down. Boots down. That's it. Into position. And let's see some exercising. Into position. Oh, 
I'll show you again. That's it. You get round there. That's it. You in there. Into position. That's it. Round there. And that's it. Start exercising. Hop two. Hop two. I'll have you fit by the end of this. Come on, you lot. You lot as well. Come on. Keep it up. Hop two. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. You lot. Into position. Keep exercising. Into position. Now, after three, I'm going to blow me whistle, and you all know what to do. One, two, three. Here's another one of my all-time favourite art attacks, and do you know what? It is so simple. It's a very easy and effective way of creating shadows on your pictures using a thick felt tip pen and a bit of scribble. Oh, and um, I'll let you into a secret. If you look closely, you'll spot something that wasn't meant to happen. Just as I'm about to shade in the man's foot in this picture, a fly, which was buzzing round in the studio, flew right across the picture and actually made an appearance on television. Just take a very quick look at this cartoon that I've drawn. Now, what do you think's missing from the picture? I'll give you a clue. It's something that follows you around all day. Got it? Shadows. But where do you put the shadows in your picture? Well, here's a good tip. Look for the place that the light can't get to. Now, in this picture, the light is coming from this street lamp here, so I'll just chalk that in like that and it'll be shining out in this direction and it'll be shining down onto the man down this side of him so the light won't be able to get to this side of him. So I'm just going to draw in the shade down his left-hand side there and, of course, no light will be able to get under the brim of his hat so I'll put that in. I'm just doing it very quickly like that, putting shadow or shade all the way down that side where the light can't get to all the time looking for those little nooks and crannies and put it on his legs as well because the light won't be able to get under his coat and don't forget he'll be casting a shadow out across the pavement because the light can't get to it because he's standing in the way and also up the wall like that and there it is now one place the light will be coming from in a lot of your pictures is the sun when you've drawn your picture you have to decide where the sun is in your picture and let's just put it peeping over the horizon there in fact it's going down at the end of the day and then just look for the places that the light can't get to so on the coach it'll be in shade at the back there like that maybe one of the wheels underneath and on the horse's bottoms like that and they'll be getting a nice suntan up front and don't forget the coach will be casting out a shadow along the ground and on the cowboy himself well that side will be in light and this side will be in shade. So we've got all his front with the light nicely shining on the front of it and all his backside, so to speak, in shadow. Right with that, all the way down, just scribbling it in. Great effect. And don't forget on his gun there and down that arm. And don't forget, he will also be casting a shadow with the light shining between his legs and out the shadow goes in that direction what about the cactus? Yep, yeah, you've got it. It's down this side of the cactus like that, with a shadow out in that direction. Try it yourself. Put some shadows into your pictures and look for the places that the light can't get to.
You know, one thing I've realised over the years on Art Attack is that you can create pictures out of almost anything. And you can get ideas from almost anywhere. It's just a case of keeping your eyes open and looking round. I get ideas just by walking down the street, when I'm on the bus, when I'm on holiday, when I'm watching telly, even when I'm having my breakfast just looking at the cereal boxes. There are ideas everywhere. And some of the best ideas I find in schools. This is my cityscape of New York flats. It's just built of a cardboard box and newspaper. My name's Adam. This is my picture. It's based on mother and son. It's made out of newspaper. My name is Stephen Rudrum. And my name is Alex Campbell. We have made this out of newspaper and card. It's meant to be buildings in a big city like New York. Great art attacks all using newspaper. Now, don't throw away your newspapers when you finish with them. Use them, I say. Now, what I've done here is I've cut out some columns of writing. And I think if you look closely at them, all the words look like bricks. No, don't worry. I've gone a bit mad. Watch this. Fold down one side. Fold down the other side. Like that. And then a cut across the top there. Another one down there. Get those bits out of the way. Don't need them. Fold over again. And there you have a 3D... Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say what it is. I'll bring in another one. There's another one that I've folded and cut over the top. And another one there. Nope, it's not a rocket. Put a load of bricks together. And what do you get? Yes, of course. Buildings. I'll put another one there. Now, if I use the part of the newspaper that's got a photograph on it, just tuck it behind. It gives the effect of a building in the distance there. Another fat one down the front. And slowly but surely, I think I'll put that on top there. So you can just lie them on the top. You can glue them if you like. I'm just laying them on to show you. And I think one more. Let me see. I was about right in the middle, just laying it on, having a bit of black peeping through there. Now, I've cut a moon out of Orange magazine, so I'm going to just pop that in the top there and get some glitter and just sprinkle that over the city skyline to create the effect. Stars, that's it, shining away. And this is the good bit. Watch this. I'm just going to create the effect of reflection from these buildings, like that, which makes it look as if they're standing in front of some water. Now, this moon here, just put a little bit in there. Great effect, that. Ah, we need a roadway in front of the buildings and put stars, buildings, roads and water together. And what you get? New York. Why don't y'all try it yourself and give yourself a New York newspaper attack? I did. Have a go yourself. And don't forget, you don't have to be a great artist to be a great artist. I'll see you again. Ta-ra!